Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Phenomenal Views. I am your host, Nick Smith, of course, and I have, of course, I have just uploaded my review of the Lorax, which you can go look at at uh, Google.com, Facebook.com, Twitter, or, of course, you know, right here on YouTube, so, you know, look for that. Um, also, the film that I'm talking about is a film that came out in 2011, which I should have reviewed, but I didn't start reviewing until that time, and I just didn't ever get around to it. I didn't take reviewing films seriously, like I do now. But a film I am going to talk about is a film that came out in 2011. It was a reboot to the original series, The Planet of the Apes. Yes, I am here to talk about the reboot by Rupert Wyatt, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of reviews on this film. This is my personal take on it. I loved this film. This was a great film, a good remake, a very good reboot to the series, and my cell phone just went off. But this is a good film because in this film, they talk, they show, oh, we screwed up. Oh, this is our fault. Because it is. In this film, the film is about a guy who was played by James Franco, which was actually supposed to be played by Tobey Maguire, but he didn't want to do it, and he suggested James Franco, which is good because he owned in this film. He did really, he was amazing in this movie. Um, and he's developing a, a cure for Alzheim or Alzheimer's. I actually know how to say the word right, Alzheimer's. Yes, he's wanting to find a cure for Alzheimer's. And he makes this, this he makes this serum called Something 12, and he injects it into all the apes. And it changes their eyes green. And when he's working on his, when he's doing a presentation about his latest ape, Bright Eyes, she goes crazy and ends up get, having to get put down along with all the other apes. And it turns out she had a child. Now, James Franco ends up taking that home and raising the ape, known as Caesar, with his dad, who is also struggling with Alzheimer's. So, he, when Bright Eyes goes on a berserk... His boss basically shuts it down, but he steals some of the formula and gives it to his dad, and it improves. But unfortunately, the seer, his body is fighting against it, and the Alzheimer's strikes back harder. And as Caesar gets older, he wants to be out more, the more free he wants to get. But the older he gets, the smarter he gets. And... That's one of the things that they did talk about very well in this movie. They showed how he gets smarter and how intelligent he is from start to finish. And the acting in this film was great, especially the guy who played Caesar. Now, they do... Caesar is a person. Even though he's an animal, he's more human than he is an animal. And there goes my phone again. Um, but this was a, this was a great film. Um, but as time goes on, Franco eventually takes Caesar out to the Red Woods, and, you know, Caesar plays around out there and everything, and the older he gets, the more actually aggressive he gets, because, well, you know, I mean, I guess apes get more aggressive as they get older, but, you know, I'm not a zoologist, so I wouldn't know. But one day, his dad's Alzheimer's gets worse, and he gets in a car, and he wrecks it, or he doesn't wreck, he doesn't wreck it, but he goes back and forth, and he dents it. And Caesar doesn't like what the guy is yelling at at his grandpa or something, I don't know. James Franco's dad. And so Caesar's just trying to protect his loved one, so he attacks the guy, bites his finger off. Now, unfortunately, that does get him sent to animal control, and it does get him sent to a penitentiary. Uh, a peni a peni uh. Uh, a place for apes, basically. I don't know how to say it. It, it. It's a place for apes. So, you know, when he's there, he gets beaten on by, like, a couple of the apes. And the guy who played Malfoy from Harry Potter, which I loved this guy in this film. I hated him. But that's the point. You're supposed to. But he did a good job as playing a deceitful, evil douche. I mean, he's done it seven, no, eight years in a row. Harry Potter, Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets... Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, you get the point. Uh, he did a very good job in this film, and the guy who played William Stryker in the second X-Men movie was in this too. Um, he plays the guy who runs the penetrary, or pen penetrary, I guess that's how you say it. But, you know, eventually, 
James Franco decides, okay, we're going to make a stronger antibody, the one that will actually help my dad improve. And this is actually, uh, the reason why I'm reviewing this now is because I cannot wait for the second Planet of the Apes movie, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So this made me want to run by Walmart, which, by the way, I strongly recommend getting this film. Running by Walmart and getting this film and watching it. And how the virus gets out, it's like with the T-virus in Resident Evil. If it's submitted the right way, it won't do anything harmful. But if it's brought out into the open like into the air becoming airborne it will kill people and one of james franco's friends in this film who plays the ape expert he dies from the disease he's coughing up blood and he dies from the disease so that's how the virus starts and in the in the trailer for dawn of the planet of the apes they say it took us four years to fight that virus excuse me it took us four years to fight that virus that's what they were talking about and this does set up a for a great sequel so eventually Caesar sneaks out, he escapes and goes to the lab or goes to uh, back to his home and steals the formula, breaks in the pri breaks into the prison, throws the canisters and it makes the apes all smarter. But they're not as smart as Caesar because he gave himself the dose of the thir of the 13, whereas he was born with genes that would make him smart already. So that's why he can talk and the other apes can't. So as this happens, they all get back in their cell and then when they go out to their little play thing, um, they all band together, but they don't break out until night. Night is when they break out. And they actually, they show how smart Caesar is from being able to do smart puzzles, sign language, and eventually being able to talk. Also, like, how to construct things to break out of prison and stuff like that. And when he gets out, when all the apes get out, how they actually do escape is when they let the apes back in to, you know, be done with playing. Caesar doesn't go back. And the guy who played Draco Malfoy tries to get him back in by shocking him with a taser. He eventually screws up. Caesar beats him down. And he grabs him and he's like, get your stinking paws off me, you dang dirty ape. And this is my favorite scene in the film. It has such emotion and such power in just a couple words. He looks at him and says, no. When he said no, when I first watched this film, and he said no, I was shocked. My jaw dropped. I did not expect him to talk. They didn't show anything like that in the trailers. I did not expect Caesar to talk. This was a great film, because I've never seen any of the Planet of the Apes movies. So this was a great way to get me into the series. When he said no, gosh, I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. So yes, Caesar says no. He locks Draco Malfoy in the prison, but there's another employee who works with him who didn't ever hurt the apes. So when he comes out, when he goes out, all the apes are attacking him, but Caesar stops them, and he puts him in the cage because Caesar won't hurt anyone that hasn't caused him harm. But if it's someone who has caused him harm, oh, he'll, he will hurt you. He doesn't kill well, actually, he killed Draco, the Draco Malfoy guy because the guy came after him with the taser and Caesar was just like, okay, whatever, blast him with a uh, freaking, blasted him with a water hose. They escape and they're, basi and they're basically going to around the town releasing all the apes. James Franco and his girlfriend, who was the vet, but now, you know, she's not because she's his girlfriend, they discovered that Caesar's, Caesar lived in the attic, basically, and, like, whenever he was uh, swinging around or something, like, the thing would always, you know, dangle back and forth. So then they discover the serum's gone, and they discover that Caesar escaped when they go to the place because the guy says, your ape spoke. So when they go, he's like, I know where they're going. They're going to the company that he works for called Genesis, and they get all the apes out, and they basically ramsack the place. And James Franco's boss gets taken down by one of the apes that actually caused the infection it was an ape that they called that was called cuba or cuba um and he had like one fake eye and he was doing more experiments on this ape the boss was and so the boss gets his when they're on the bridge when all math when all heck breaks loose because the apes are trying to get to the red woods where caesar was allowed to run free for a while that's what Caesar's basically trying to do, is get there so they can be free. And so, uh, Caesar, Caesar isn't stupid. Caesar's very smart. So when they see Fog, Caesar says, stop, 
because he knows that there's soldiers on the other side, or he just, or he's just like better do this to be safe. So he tells a couple apes to go up, and he tells a, a bunch of others to go down, while him and some others ransack the bridge. And like, like I said, they're not trying to hurt anybody; they're just trying to get there. So James Franco and his girlfriend come up with a plan to trick the eight or trick the police, so that way James Franco can get to Caesar. And, you know, then a helicopter comes, and then it's shooting at the apes. A gorilla, who was, like, the meanest person in the zoo or the penitentiary. That's what it is, penitentiary. Uh, he takes down the helicopter, but he sadly dies. When the helicopter crashes, it's James Franco's boss holding on, and he's asking Caesar to help him. He's about to stick out his hand, but then he he doesn't. He just walks off. But then that uh, ape that they experimented on pushes him off the bridge. I was like, oh, this is just irony. But eventually the apes do get to the forest, and James Franco, we get one last scene with James Franco and Caesar. And he's like, Caesar, come on, come home. I, I swear I will protect you. You're not like them. Uh, they're, you know that you know what they're capable of. Caesar looks back at them and then uh, brings James Franco closer, and he goes, Caesar is home. And James Franco understands. He's like, okay, Caesar is home. I get it. So the movie the movie ends with Caesar climbing up the trees and looking over the city. And then the movie cuts. The movie ends. This was my favorite. I think this was my favorite movie of 2011. Definitely my favorite movie of 2011. Um, good acting. Great visual effects. Especially the guy who played Caesar. And yes, Caesar is a person. Caesar is not just an animal. He is a person. He's more of a person than he is an animal. And trust me, if you watch the film, you will know what I'm talking about. But even though that this is the only Planet of the Apes movie that I have seen, it's it's my favorite so far because it's the only one I've seen. But I cannot wait for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which comes out, I believe, July 7th or 22nd. I think it's actually July 7th. But um, this film, they did great on. Rupert Wyatt knew, apparently loved the series, so he knows what he's doing. I strongly recommend owning this film. I really do. It, I've never watched the Tim Burton one, but I've heard that's a piece of crap. But I would strongly recommend going to Walmart or your local video place or whatever and pick up Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Trust me, it lives up to its title. It lives up to its, t it lives up to its title and its potential. It's got great actors, great acting, great scenes, great action, drama, some sadness. It's got everything. This is a great film. Guys, well, I am your host, Nick Smith. This has been another episode of Phenomenal Views. Stay tuned for my next uh, gameplay episode, my next gameplay upload, where I'll be continuing playing The Punisher. Guys, have a good night. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I go, before I go, there was another scene I was wanting to talk about. When Caesar gets put into the penitentiary, um, James Franco comes and visits him twice. The first time, the reason why he can't get Caesar out of there is because he has to wait for a date to get a court order. He doesn't want to anymore, so he gets a bunch of mo he gets a bunch of money, and he throws it on the desk to the manager, and the manager lets him basically says, "All right, I'll release him." Caesar is in the prison, and he's like, "Come on, Caesar, let's go. Let's let's go home. We're really going home." The only th reason Caesar won't go home with him is because he sees that James Franco has a leash in his hand, and Caesar will not go back to being a prisoner. Basically, I mean, he wasn't a prisoner in his own home, but he didn't like having that leash on. He did not want to go back to that, so he just decided, "Forget it. I, I'll just stay here with my own kind." This is the relationship between Caesar and James Franco was a great one. It was a very good. I don't know if he's going to be in the second film. It doesn't look like he's going to from the trailers. But, you know, guys, Nick Smith, uh, Phenomenal Views. Check out my other videos. Check out my video gameplay channel. Check out my Facebook. Uh, you know, tell me what games you guys want me to review. Tell me what movies you want me to review. I'm getting ready to watch RoboCop for my very first time ever. Yeah. Well, guys, have a good weekend. Even though it's almost over, have a good week.